Touch me with your grace. Lord, I praise you. In your arms I stay. Lord, I love you. My heart calls your name. I surrender all of me to you. No other can do for me what you do. Your love and grace makes me feel brand new. I can't escape this love I have for you. You've been better than good to me. Good morning, New Bethel. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You know, there are, I've said this before, there are people all over this world who are in situations where they wish they could get up and walk to church or walk to the store or walk to the playground with their children. There are people who uh, are suffering from illnesses and diseases and wish that they could be able to be with us. They're bedridden and they can't get out of bed. They're in hospital wards all over the world can't get out they're not going to get out there are people in respites in hospices who will never get out of the bed and yet here we are here we are and it's not by accident because none of us deserved his grace it was only because he loved us and saw fit to have us to be around with the right use of our legs and our arms and our minds and I just want us to take an opportunity to say thank you. To say thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. To say thank you, Lord, for the things that you haven't done yet but are going to do. Oh, Lord, thank you. The Bible says a thousand tongues would not be enough to say thank you for all that you've done for me. Everybody here has a story. We've gone places. We've done things. And we know what God has delivered us from. When the doctor said there was no way, we came out of it. When we found ourselves unable to pay the rent, somehow the money showed up. The, the, the Lord touched the landlord's heart. He gave us grace. He gave us an extension. The, the, the job that wanted to fire us, they kept us on. But it was all because we have a God that loves us and that wants us to have the very, very best. Amen. Is there any believers in here today? Brother Carlton, do you believe? My sister, do you believe? Sister, are you a believer? Deacon Horner, are you a believer? Are you a believer? Oh, goodness gracious. We believe that Christ Jesus came to save us from ourselves. Yeah. And if left to our own devices, we would be burning in our graves right now. Amen. So thank you, Lord. Amen. I just want to start off with praying, and I want all of those who are able to pray and to join me in prayer to join your prayer with mine as we send it heavenward. Father, in the name of your precious son, Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this morning, God. We thank you for the traveling mercies. Everyone came from home, was able to arrive here safely. Lord, we thank you for the things that has caused us to want to have the unction to come to church, Lord to want us to look in your word, God, to want us to know you more, God, to, to want us to be part of what you want us to do. God, I pray that you would continue to move this church in the direction that you have seen fit. God, you have already laid down the plans for where this church should go and where it will go. God, I pray you would touch the hands that are responsible for this church, Lord. Lord, even the members, Lord, that you, that, that you know who they are, that the ones that are here, the ones that are not here, God, you know who they are, God. God, you have a mission for New Bethel. God, you have an opportunity to give us that we be able to lift your name up and give you all the honor, glory, and praise. God, we ask you to look at the angel of this house, Lord. God, please cover him. God, he has burdens. He has things he has to do. He has to negotiate the, the church business, and he has to continue to keep himself up. And I, as you see, Lord, even in his illness, Lord, that you are able to revive him, God. He's able to walk around, God. So many did not survive those kind of crashes, God, but you seen fit, and we thank you for that, God. Yes. God, I pray for the direction of New Bethel, God.
God, you're wanting people to come. You're wanting people to be served. You're wanting people to hear your word. You're wanting people to be part of the ministry. God, bring them and they will come, God. Teach them and they will learn, God. Help us all, God. And this is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. We're going to get into our little hymn, hymnal this morning. I know some like them, some wear hymns. But even if you're not, I want you to go with me to page 222. We've come this far by faith. Amen. Leaning on his holy word. He's never failed me yet. Oh, 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 oh. Can't turn around. We've come this far by faith. We've come this far by faith. Leaning on the world. Trusting in his holy word. He never failed me yet. Oh, 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 oh. can't turn around. We, we come this far by faith. faith. We've come this far by faith. Leaning on the, the Lord, Lord, trusting in his holy word. He's never failed me yet. Oh, can't turn around. We've come this far by faith. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Whoa, Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. You got to call him up and tell him what you want. If you want the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. If you want the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. If you want the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. You got to call him up and tell him what you want. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell me what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Call him up and tell him what you want. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Promised him that I would serve him till I die, and I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Hey, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord, and I promised him that I. I would serve him till I die on the battlefield for my Lord. On the battlefield yes. for my Lord. Oh, on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I, I would serve him till I die. And I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Amen. Sister Wanda, where are you? You're not here. You hiding behind Brother Victor. I look over at where all I see is Brother Victor. And we know he can't sing. <laughs> but we know you can. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, that's uh, what else you got for us? I don't know. You sir? Well, 
four, four, 432. Then you can ask for a testimony or two. You'll sing one? Amen. All right. <laughs> I'll fly away. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's get the mic where you can work, where, you know. <laughs> yeah, try that. And then well, after we sing, that's fly too away. Short. That's too short. Oh, that's too short. <laughs> we will open up service for our testimony service. I know the Lord has done some things for people. I know God has did some things for people. People don't feel worthy of talking about it, but I think we should acknowledge it. We should let people know that God is active in our lives. We should let know that what God is doing. God has done something for somebody in this room. Huh? He woke us up this morning. Exactly. Huh? Amen. Amen. All right. I'll fly away. That's page 432. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to our home, God's celestial show. Wait, 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 now, I've been to funerals before. <laughs> Brother. And I've been to a church service before. Yeah, come on. And what I just heard was a funeral procession. Come ask the church to sing this thing like y'all mean this thing. Amen. Like it means something. Is that all right? Amen. Is that all right, sister? That's all right. Is that all right, Brother Carlton? All right. All right. One more time. Pick it up. All right, Brother Will. A little faster. A lot, fa lot faster. Some glad, glad morning when this life is over, I'll away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. I'll fly away for glory. I'll Who 
type of testimony just to share what the Lord has done for you. Is there somebody that has a testimony this morning to share about God's goodness, what he's done, what, what you've witnessed God do in his power, his grace, his mercy? Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. 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 God is truly a miracle worker. God is able to do things exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can think or ask. And I know for a fact that there's been times that I've been in a jackpot. I don't know about all y'all, but there's been times that I've been in jackpots. Okay? Yeah. And God delivered me. And I remember saying, I promise I'll next time I promise I'll do such and such and thus and so. And you know what? I've reneged. But today, I'm just going to give God the glory. Thank you, Lord. Come on, sister. Thank you. Because as soon as he walked in and everybody, oh, no COVID. Oh, he's negative with COVID. Oh, it's just a sinus infection. Just keep moving. <laughs> so um, God brought me through that. Nothing, nothing, nothing and no one could have prepared me for something like that. Um, and then after that, I have a disability that's been affecting me since 2011. And then January of 2021, my body decided it, it doesn't want to go anymore, <laughs> basically to put it. So now I have to go on disability, but there's a lot of ramifications with that because I live in my family home of 40 years. I have to leave. Um, number one, I can't afford it on disability, my mortgage. And then second, they consider it a danger to me now because it is four floors, it is a big home. And um, 
that when my my disability is very odd like i thank god that i'm able to stand here today and talk to you guys but tomorrow i could wake up and i can't walk i can't talk i can't do anything i'm just curled up in the fetal position like an invalid and um it's tough it's yes. tough when those days come it's tough, you know, like I can't, I, all I know to do is to work. I can't go back to work because tomorrow I could wake up and I can't move and I can't walk and I can't talk. And I may stay that way for a couple of days. And then, you know, but um, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to God because he does wake me up every day. Yes, to yes. To go to battle, to go to battle. And not only that, to show others how good he is is yes. how merciful he yes. is because in that same token okay i just want to say what my son first and foremost he was an organ donor so he has saved um his organs have helped save the lives of six people one of them being a little girl between nine and twelve one of the women um uh wrote to us the other day and um, my home literally almost went two years without being paid and again god answered prayers the government you know program came out and paid thirty thousand dollars to pay off my back mortgage and now um i was able to get a voucher to go look for a place which that in itself is a chore but see i gave it to god people don't understand god moves those mountains yeah. god makes those miracles happen to this yes, day yeah. and people forget that they say oh i was lucky oh this happened there is no coincidence i'm here to say there is no but there is a god that is able to do all things all things nothing nothing is impossible with my god nothing is impossible and i love him and i thank him in every breath of my body because satan i rebuke you because you come daily Every time I open my mouth to praise my God, you come daily and try to knock it down. But I swear with every fiber, every being, everything in my heart that I love and know that I serve a God, his omnipotent, all seeing, all knowing, all hearing. And he will watch over me, watch over me with all these things, the ailments in my body, the loss of my son, the loss of my family home, the new life that I must create. Because God closed all those doors because he said he has a much better one that he has opened up. Yeah. And for me to seek and find my way there, just as he yeah. has found me here at New Bethel. Amen. 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 Woo, we testifying this morning. <laughs> I, uh just opened my Bible and I was looking at uh, a scripture here. I had a note in there that Psalm 103 verses 1 through 6. I was going through a battle and uh, this is what strengthened and encouraged me. So I'm reading it to other people to strengthen and encourage other people. Amen. Bless Yahweh, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless Yahweh, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is re renewed like an eagle's. Yahweh ex executeth righteousness and judgment for all the that are oppressed. Amen? Amen. So that, that encouraged me when I was going through a battle myself. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Chief. Is that possible? Hello. All right, no. give him that. Yeah, I, I got a quick testimony. Um, my father is going to have a heart procedure this week. Amen. Um, he's had an aneurysm that's been growing for the past 20 years. He's 82 or 83. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a big, a big day. I don't know how complicated the procedure is, but uh, I was trying to get him to come today. Uh, hopefully he'll show up. Um, Amen. And other than that, uh, I started a new job a couple months ago. I work with uh, Trinity Solar, and uh, I never really thought that I would do good at the job. And uh, prayed to God every day to just give me uh, the composure and the necessary work ethic. Not that I don't have work ethic, but I ended up being the top rep last week. Out Amen. Of, uh, out of out of three hundred people, out of yeah. out of ten different states across yeah. the Northeast. But, there yeah. you go. So uh, I'm pretty grateful right now, and uh, things are looking up for me, and I'm making decent money, and you know, living better than I was as a carpenter. So. Amen. 
Amen. All right. Amen. God bless. Uh, I had a stroke. I couldn't walk, couldn't talk, couldn't move my arms. Oh, it, it looked what happened to me after eight years. I couldn't walk, couldn't talk. It, oh. oh, to God oh. be the glory. I, I know it. To God Amen. be the glory. Ah. Oh. Look, ah. Grab, grab the mic. Amen. All right, we're gonna get right into our service of call to worship. You're, you're the one arm paper hanger this morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> amen. 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 And we'll get we'll get uh when it comes time for the sermon of scripture, we'll get uh Sister Wanda and Brother Victor up to read the sermon scriptures. Yes. Okay. Uh we wanna we, we definitely want to keep Reverend Ernest on our prayer list. Yeah. He's, uh the last I talked with him, he had to go to the hospital again to deal with uh, some issues uh so he may be here today he may not we're not sure but uh we want to keep definitely want to keep him in our prayers um if you did not get one of these handouts when you came in i'm going to ask the uh deacon can you make sure that everybody that comes in gets one of those handouts um we, go ahead we will um i just want to be sure everyone has a uh a church deacon phone has given everyone a program so just give me a second to be sure make sure everyone has a program and we will go forward with the call of worship amen <laughs> Call the worship. And if we could sing this, I'm sorry, if we could just say this in unison, that would be ushering all this up to our Lord in unison together as a corporate entity. That would be that would be wonderful. <laughs> yes. Amen. Those who are able to stand, if you could stand. Call to worship. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boasting in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Psalms 34, 1 and 3. Amen. And with our invocation or prayer, I'm going to ask if our gatekeeper, would come up, Brother Bob. Would you come up with our? Huh? Would you come up with our invocational prayer? The invocational prayer, of course, is inviting and asking the Holy Spirit to. Pardon? No, it's in your heart. <laughs> All right. All right. Heavenly Father, I just I pray for each person here. We all have needs. We all have things to be thankful for. We all have blessings. And I just, I just thank you for each person here. And I, li I lift up all the needs that you've heard this so far today. I, I thank you for the work you're doing in Pastor Walker's leg. And I, I, each person here's need be met and be blessed and strengthened in the Holy Spirit. The power of your love working in each one's life to meet the need they have today. And we give you thanks, praise, and glory in Yeshua's name, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, the announcements are quite simple. April is going to be a life-changing month for all of us here today in New Bethel. Um, a great brother of mine, one of, I, I don't have, quote, unquote, too many friends as a matter of fact, somebody asked me how many friends I had, and I can count them all on one hand uh, because my, my standard of friendship is quite high. You call me at 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm not asking you why, I'm asking you where. <laughs> okay, 
So that's just that simple. Whatever you need to do, we do. Whenever you call me, I'm there. Whenever I call you, you're there. <clears throat> so I can count on one hand the amount of people in my life that are like that. Well, this particular brother um, was convinced. This is a person who I know to be one of the more faithful. I know we're not supposed to put judgments on people, but to be one of the more faithful Christians I know. And he called me up and he said, Pastor, I have to apologize to you. I have to confess to you. And um, I'm allowed to share this, which is why I'm doing it. Other than that, y'all wouldn't hear about it. Um, <clears throat> I don't feel as though I've been faithful. And he was convicted. So he created a program that you've been handed out. And we're going to be working in that on, over the course of this month. Um, it is not, I am not a person that will stand up and promise miracle cures and great wonders works and things of that nature. That's not me. But what I will say that if my God, who doesn't lie, says that if we are faithful and if we believe, then miraculous things can happen. So we have it written out. You all been, you all been, have been given a, excuse me, have all been given a, um, a handout and all of the messages that come from the front of this church for the next 30 days are going to be something having to do with faith. The Bible studies and the studies, we're going we're gonna to set aside just for a bit the actual study of the Bible, and we're going to go through the Bible and discuss incidents and, and, and faith in detail, the different faith uh, aspects that will be coming across. All right, so that's that's the plan. And now, without any further ado, <clears throat> it is my privilege to present to some and introduce to others our open homilist this morning, Reverend Larry Fitzpatrick. Thank you, Reverend Dan. Now, for those of you who know me and Reverend Dan, we go back a little bit. <laughs> I first uh, met Reverend Dan uh, oh, probably, I want to say, 15 years ago. Uh, no, I blew in glasses. <laughs> <laughs> and at that time, he was uh, uh, involved with another church, and he was the, we used to call him the uh, electronic whiz kid because this guy knew how to set up, like, sound systems for, like, groups and bands, and he knew a how to get the mics and he, I mean, he had like this whole, he had a, tr he had a truck that was piled at least this high with electronic equipment. He would take from place to place. And when I first met him, he was on the street in front of a, 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 a city hall. Yeah. And I said, who is this? Who was this person? Because at the time in Framingham, there wasn't a lot of people on street corners preaching. Those days, have, if, you know, back in the day, you used to see street corner preachers all the all, all over the place. And I was like, who was this guy? I was driving by, and I said, who was this guy? He said, oh, yeah, that's that's uh, the, yeah, that's that's the music guy for uh, New Jerusalem, I think it was. What? Yeah. Was it New Jerusalem? Yeah. The music guy. The music guy. That's right. That's right. That's who they said he yeah. was. The music guy. And. Uh, uh, God rest his soul, one of my beloved brothers, Lewis Miller, uh, Reverend Lewis Miller, who yeah. left all too soon as far as I'm concerned. We had a we had a group. We had a we had a a a, a group, a, a a band. And Tony, I think you you remember, don't you? Yeah, you you were the drummer. <laughs> and uh, we had a concert, and uh, it was it was it was it was Reverend Dan at the time. He hadn't been called to that calling at the moment. He right. was still uh, Dan the Music Man. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my first uh, opportunity uh, to really meet him. And then over the years, we've done different things. And he invited me to certain uh, engagements and, and so forth and so on. And, and uh, as far as New Bethel is concerned, uh, I said to him, not that long ago, really, I said, you know, I've been a friend to New Bethel uh, 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 Deacon Horn uh, for many years now and love this church. I've always said that this church has this raw potential to just blow Framingham out of the, oh my goodness. And I said, but the Lord hasn't released me yet, as you know. Yeah. 
The Lord hasn't released me yet. You know, sometimes the Lord puts us under construction. Do you, do you know what being under construction is? You know, when you put one brick in front of the other and you lay a platform, a foundation, and then on top of that foundation, you build your house. Amen. And so when it comes to us personally, we all are our own temples. And the Lord has a foundation in us. And he's building upon that foundation. And we make mistakes and we make errors. And we're supposed to learn from those errors and move forward past those errors. All right? When Reverend Dan asked me uh, about this, I said, well, Reverend, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to be available. But let me just tell you how God works. And then I'm just going to give you a, a couple of minutes. Uh, I just want to talk about uh, some, 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 some faith. But, but before I get there, I just want to just say this. Because God works in such mysterious ways, right? So, so, so I had other plans, but it was Muriel. It was Muriel that said, no, Larry, we're going to do that. Now, I said, I don't want to do that. I said, we, were gonna, we had this thing planned. No, we're, we're going to do that. And when I came here today, I looked at the uh, program. And whose name do I see at the top of that page? <laughs> huh? The invocation prayer said Larry Fitzpatrick, Reverend Larry Fitzpatrick. So even though my plans was to be somewhere else, and Muriel said, we're going to do this, this was what God had intended to be from the get-go. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And that's how he works yes. in every area of our lives. We have plans that we want to do. We're thinking about A, B, and C, but God said, no, I said, I want you to do A, B, C, E, G, F, and we, and that's not what we want to do. Lord, please help us to be more able to be adherent to your will, to be obedient to your will, Yes, yes. to walk in your order. If we knew what we were doing, Lord, we wouldn't need you. If we had it all together, God, we would already have it all together. But we don't. And you know why? Because we need you in every step of the way. As I was uh, driving here this morning, I, I thought about uh, faith. And I said, you know, I've read many, many uh, faith passages in the word. Most, most of you in this room, you, you all have heard faith before. You've read some scriptures regarding faith. You've heard uh, people preaching uh, regarding faith. You've heard many sermons with faith involved. I said, God, what is it you want you like your people to hear? And the Lord spoke to me. He said, the whole premise of the idea of faith, right, is that first we must believe that God is. Yes. Okay. Yes. So let's so let's strip everything away from that word faith and let's get to believing that God is. That God exists. You have to ask yourself, do you believe that God said light and all of a sudden light just shot out of darkness? Huh? You have to ask yourself this. Do you actually believe? Do you actually believe that Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth? And just with a word, that man stood up. I, I, listen to me. I'm talking about that God is. Yeah, do you yeah. believe it? Because when we're submitting prayers heavenward, asking for some kind of answer, and we do not have the wings of faith to take it to heaven, what do you think happened to those prayers? If you are believing in something, but you don't have faith that it will be done, what is the end result of that thing you believe in? Huh? All right, I'm going to say this. I'm going to prove what I know, that, that you all have heard this before. Faith without works is? Uh huh. I knew y'all heard this somewhere before. Mm -hmm. okay. So if I took a seed and planted it, a seed of faith, mm -hmm. and it grew, yes, it would grow and grow and grow, right? Do you know there are certain seeds that you can plant that are not fertile, mm. and you can plant it and look at it and watch the soil for weeks and months and years and watch the soil. Nothing. Watch the soil, nothing. Right? <laughs> Watch the soil, nothing. Watch the soil, nothing. Right? Do you believe that this is such a thing is that if somebody, and I, I didn't know that this was, was a thing, but there are seeds that lay dormant in the earth 
that can be there for several years. And then all it needs is a nice, brisk rain shower to activate it. And so after being dormant for several years, it will sprout. Did you know that? Did you know that was a thing? I didn't know that. What am I trying to say here? I'm trying to say that we, all of us, that's sitting in this room right now, sister, I don't know who you are, you too. You know that there is a God somewhere. You know the concept of God. I know you do, right? And yet there are probably some things you've asked God for and God did not give. Brother, has God answered every single one of your prayers? Exactly. Sister, has God answered every single one of your prayers? Aha. Uh -huh. Sister, has God ever answered every single one of your prayers? Well, let me tell you something. God has not answered every single one of my prayers. And let me tell you why. Because what I didn't know and what I know today is that some of those prayers I was offering up, offering up, ushering up, uh -huh. they were faithless prayers. Yes, yes. I was begging. <laughs> Huh? I was begging. And today, I just want you all to know that all we have to do is ask. We don't have to beg. We can just simply ask him and believe in our hearts. And with that faith, the Bible says we can move mountains. I was in a church once, and I'm going to close with this, uh, Reverend uh, Dan. I was in a church once, right? And uh, the 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 preacher said, uh, uh, okay, uh, Elder Larry, I, you, know, you, you know, would you please expound on this particular subject, whatever it was. And I remember I was so full at that time of the spirit. And I said, here we are, saints of God. Here we are talking about what God is able to do and this and that and blah, blah, blah. I said, but right now, everybody in this church, if, if we had a casket in this church right now and a preacher walked up to that casket and and, and imbued with the Holy Spirit, walked up to that casket and said, rise. And that thing got out of that casket. Everybody in this church would have beat the pass out the door. Amen. <laughs> and I said, and that's not what should have happened. The whole church should have been rejoicing. They should have been saying, hallelujah. But that's not what would have happened. People would have got up and flew out the door. So we serve a God that with faith, all things are possible. At this time, let me turn the service over to Reverend Dan. Amen. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Reverend, I'm glad he didn't give any dates on that as to how long I've known him. <laughs> he did manage to remember my, one of my least favorite nicknames. <laughs> I've had a whole bunch of them apparently. <laughs> But it is good to see that God is working in his life and God is doing what God wants to do, no matter what I think. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm just pleased. As, as, I'm just very happy that God is uh, fit to work. And we're going to continue on with the spirit as we move along. Excellent, excellent time. Perfect, perfect. Right on, right on track. Um, Our sermon topic is Be Thou Removed, Part 1. And the subheading, because, you know, folks, we just can't name thing one thing. The subheading is No Greater Faith. Um, I'm going to ask if Brother Victor and Sister Wanda would take their place at the microphone. Okay. Well, he's a wordsmith, so he's the perfect one. Y'all work that out. In the meantime, is from Reverend Larry, if we could stand, Reverend Larry, as, as soon as uh, you help her out with those words, uh, then we'll get uh, our hymn, our hymn of preparation. So you work on that. I don't... No, if Will must have had to go to the, oh, there he is. <laughs> I'm sorry, you kind of blended into the background there. 
We had so much light. Uh, then after the hymn of preparation, then the next voice you'll hear will be yours truly with the word. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. This morning's reading is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 8, and the verses 5 through 9. Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him. Ascending, saying, Lord, my servant is lying home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The se centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. But for I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and another come, and he comes, and to my servant do this, and he does it. May, May God, God bless, bless the hearing, hearing understanding, understanding, and doing of his word. Amen. 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 Don't, don't take the mic, because Larry, Larry's got to sing. Well, you can stand and sing with him. <laughs> so, okay. Yes, she can. She, Lenny don't want to. Oh, she's not. Okay. Praise the Lord. I mean, I, I don't know what we're going to do if Gladys, nice can't, if Gladys Knight can't get her pips up here. I don't know what the deal is. <laughs> now, I'm not sure who I just insulted. <laughs> but... <laughs> Either calling them the pips or calling him Gladys Knight. <laughs> I, don't, Tony Orlando, there we go. Don't, don't worry, Pastor Dan. The, the Lord's going to send some, some singers for you. Yeah, huh? Yeah, when did he come up to? We got mics. Yeah, definitely. When did he come up to? So we got Tony, Tony Orlando and we'll, Don. We'll, we'll, we'll sing something that I think everyone knows. We'll, we'll sing Thank You, Lord. Very okay. easy. Everyone probably have heard it before. Knows the, uh, no, but you can, you can check out. That's okay. You can sing with us. Come on, Sister Wendy. You've heard this song. Come on, Sister Wanda. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank Yes. 
just want to thank you one more time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, Heavenly Father, we ask that you hide me behind your cross. Allow me to deliver your words with power and with conviction. Lord, we ask that the prayers of my heart and the meditation be acceptable in your sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I invite you to take a seat and sit upon it. Those people who know me know that I grab random quotes off of different shows and different incidences and different things in my life. And I can always tell when I meet somebody who's another trivia person because they pick up on where certain phrases come from. But I'm reasonably sure that none of you know where I got take a seat and sit upon it from. But if you think you do, you can see me after service. And if you do, I will give you a certainly a happy amen, brother or sister, you got it right. Um, the month of April is going to be a month of change for New Bethel. And New Bethel, starting with yours truly, for the next 30 days, is going to embark on a true faith walk. Now, most Christians, as Brother Larry, I love how the Spirit works and puts things in order. Most Christians have what I call a rudimentary understanding of faith. But by the end of this month, it is my prayer that our faith walks are transformed into faith runs. As pastors, we get comfortable with patterns. That means that our congregations get comfortable. And as soon as something is a little bit out of the ordinary, we kind of don't know what to do. Here at New Bethel, we've almost mastered the art of flying by the seat of our pants, <laughs> which can be both good and bad especially after you change so many pants seats. <laughs> but my prayer for the month of April is that nobody gets comfortable. All messages that are coming from the front of this church are going to be on or about faith. Today, we are going to discuss what Jesus described as the greatest faith found in Israel. A centurion was an officer in the army of ancient Rome. Centurions got their name because they commanded 100 men. Now, there were various paths that led to becoming a centurion. Like everything, the Rome was not what we would call a clean government. It was subject to many different forms of corruption. And some of the centurions were appointed or uh, by the senators because folks had money to put them in that position. When you were a centurion, you could kind of do almost anything you wanted to do because you had the power. Uh, but most of the centurions were elected by their comrades and a lot were promoted. They started as enlisted men and moved up through the ranks over the course of 15 to 20 years of service. As the company commanders, they held important responsibilities, including training, giving out assignments, maintaining discipline in the ranks. When the army encamped, the centurions supervised the building of fortifications, which was a critical duty in enemy territory. In other words, wherever they encamped, 
they were not just in charge with of making the, sure the camp was put together, but making sure that all around the camp was secure. There's a great story in the Old Testament. I won't be specific, but you scholars will recognize it when one of God's uh, beginning followers didn't understand. He thought that they were uh, in danger. And the prophet prayed to God to open his eyes so he could see the truth. And all around the camp was angels ready to protect. And I think sometimes we need to understand that as we're moving through life, that God has an encampment, not just one. We're not touched by a angel. That's Hollywood. God has an encampment of angels that surround us and move with us as we're moving in him. Now, if you want to go do your own thing, they'll just step back and say, hey, go for what you know. We'll pick up what's left. <laughs> but if you want to stay in his word and do his will, he will make sure that you have the protection as you do it. They also escorted prisoners and procured food and supplies when the army was on the move. And let me be a little clear about that securing food and supplies. It wasn't as if they had a requisition. <laughs> they would just go into the local merchants and the local homes and say, we need food and supplies. And if you were wise, you gave it to them. If you were not wise, it didn't matter. <laughs> You were, they were going to get their food and supplies. They wore military decorations, such as necklaces and bracelets, that they had received to commemorate their accomplishments. Their pay was between five and 15 times that of an ordinary soldier. You see, the Roman army was an efficient killing machine. The centurions led the way. Like the troops, they wore breastplates or chainmail shin protectors called greaves, and a distinctive helmet so that their subordinates could see them in the heat of the fight. How many times uh, those of us who have been in the street and have been confronted, my boys have been confronted by your boys, and I look for support for the rest of my friends, and for their vanishing act, they get 10 out of 10. <laughs> I turn and say, we're going to get them, and they're already gone. <laughs> That was not happening in the Roman army. They carried an 18 to 24 inch cup-shaped sword called a gladius. It had a cup-shaped pommel. It was double-edged. It was specially designed for thrusting and stabbing because such wounds created more damage than a cut. In the battle, centurions stood in the front lines leading their men. Unlike generals who are often off to one side behind the field of battle uh, commanding centurions led the fight. They were out in front and they wore particular hats. Amen. They wore particular hats so that their men could see who they were. There's a reason why I put on the robe when I come to battle. It's so that everybody that comes in this house can see who I am and know that if you don't know, look for the person in the robe. See, that's what a leader does. A leader doesn't hide behind. The leader stands up and is in front. They were expected to be courageous, rallying the troops during a tough fight, and cowards could and would be executed, period. End of story. There was no tribunal of military justice. If you ran from the fight, you best keep running, because if they caught you and when they caught you, they were killing you and everybody around you. But as we have seen, oh, I'm sorry, Julius Caesar considered these officers so vital to his success that he, can, he included them in their strategy sessions. I wish more pastors would understand that they need to include the workers in the strategy sessions. 
I wish more pastors would understand that within their congregation are many people with many gifts. And if you just allow them to do what God has called them to do with guidance, with guidance, with training where necessary, your church would be further on than wherever it is now. Here at New Bethel, that is a lesson that we constantly are learning to see who's out there and see who God is blessing and can we be a part of that blessing. Would somebody get me a cup of water? The enemy is not going to stop this message. As we have seen, God can use anyone for his purpose. And the most powerful part of the Roman Empire was no exception. There are a number of Roman centurions mentioned in the New, New Testament. One was in charge of the execution detail that crucified Christ, acting under the orders of Governor Pontius Pilate. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you very much. Somebody call Brother Victor back. We, we're good. Okay. Pilate, according to the Jewish tradition, offered to freeze free one of two prisoners. The people chose a prisoner named Barabbas and shouted for Jesus of Nazareth to be crucified. Pilate symbolically washed his hands of the matter and handed Jesus over to the centurion to, and his soldiers to be executed. But even when you are handed in the hands of your enemy, God has a way of making sure that the people who, you are, who are dealing with you know who you are. And when the centurion was ordered to break the soldiers' legs of the men who were crucified because they hadn't died yet and the Sabbath was fast approaching, we hear that in Mark, chapter 15, and when the centurion stood there in front of Jesus, saw how he died and said, surely this man was the son of God. Later, that same centurion verified to Pilate that Jesus was in fact dead. See, those people out there who try to muddy the waters, who try to say that, well, he was in a coma. He had just passed out. Uh, I, I can't say shut up because I've been told that's rude. I'll just say uh, you're wrong. Dead is dead. And then once he got the confirmation, then Pilate released the body to Joseph of Arimathea for burial. You do not release a person in a coma to be buried. No medical doctor or nurse, or even person that sweeps the floor would sign that requisition. Amen? Dead is dead. Yet another centurion who is mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter 10, he was a righteous centurion named Cornelius, and his entire family were baptized by Peter and were, first, and were some of the first Gentiles to become Christians. The, mention of the, fin the final mention of the centurion occurs in Acts 27 when the Apostle Paul and some other prisoners are put under the charge of the man named Julius, an Augustan cohort. Now, a cohort was one-tenth part of a Roman legion. 600 men. He had the command of six centurions. So he was a real high mucky muck. It is said that Julius may have been a member of the Emperor Augustus Caesar's Praetorian Guard or Bodyguard Cohort on special assignment to bring the prisoners back. And when, the ship, when their ship struck a reef and was sinking, the soldiers wanted to kill all the prisoners because the soldiers would pay for their lives who, any who had escaped. In other words, the ship is in danger, it's breaking up, and they're thinking some people are going to jump ship. But the centurion wishing to save Paul kept them from carrying out their plan. 
So as we can see, centurions have been a part of God's plan. This is important to understand. So when a centurion comes to Jesus, he's teaching us many lessons. In Matthew chapter 8, starting at verse 5, now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. Here the centurion is so showing great respect for Jesus as a Jew, knowing that certain Jewish sects taught that the Gentile contact could defile a Jew, making him unclean in the sight of his elders, because and also because of the food eaten by Gentiles and the pagan gods that they worshipped. The segregation barrier was real. And there's a principle in operation here that if you are seeking help from somebody, you should respect the person you're seeking help from. See, if you are truly selfish, Jesus said, I'll come to your house. You'd say, come on, because you want what you want. But this centurion is a man of honor. In verse 9, he says, For I am also a man under authority, having soldiers unto, under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. Oh, hallelujah. Every pastor on the face of the planet just said hallelujah. <laughs> See, don't ever call God's people cult members. Don't ever do it. Because every pastor knows in a cult, when they tell you to do something, you do it. <laughs> in a church, not so much so. <laughs> you got to hear opinions. <laughs> when Jesus heard it, he, was, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You wonder why this sentence, these two verses, are stuck at this place. It doesn't seem to fit. It doesn't seem to follow the flow of what's going on. Food and the, partaking of, and the partaking thereof was a big deal there. And still in some households today, it meant that you were, if you were invited to have dinner with the family, you were being asked and you were being accepted as a member of the family and or at least worthy to be shown the hospitalities of that family. In our home, we have a large family. I am the oldest surviving of 13 my mother had, 12 of which survived. I'm the oldest one. I'm number one son. I got proof. I got a T-shirt that says number one. And all my brothers and sisters have T-shirts with their numbers on it as to where they are. It says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And when we have a Christmas breakfast, you're looking at about 75 people coming to my sister's house for Christmas breakfast. And when we have Christmas Eve dinner, I'm sorry, Thanksgiving dinner, just Thanksgiving, because I don't, I'm, Thanksgiving. Uh, there's over, I think the last time we did it the right way before COVID, well, during COVID, there was still almost 100 people. Before COVID, it was 150 people come into the house. The doors of the house was open and the entire neighborhood knew that if you weren't eating anywhere, go to Joe's, you eat. And then with the doors are open, you come in and get yourself a plate and sit down somewhere. That's how we, I was raised. Food and family, family and food. 
Amen. And you eat what you eat. You ain't got to eat all of it, and you ain't the only one eating. <laughs> Not that I ever had to be told that <laughs> more than three or four, <laughs> ten times. <laughs> I like deviled eggs. There was only one plate, so I thought I'd get myself a few. <laughs> it smacked upside the back of my head. You ain't the only one eating, boy. <laughs> anyway. It means that when you're invited to come to a house to see if you are worthy to receive the blessing, it's important. It does not mean that just that you're there, that you're going to get the blessing. But it means that if your heart is right, you will. And what Jesus is trying to let people understand is that not everybody that comes to him is worthy of the blessing. And some people will not receive the blessing, not because of anything that Christ is doing, but because of who they are and what they are doing and what they will not release so that the work can be done. That's a very important lesson in the middle of all of this, that sometimes it is incumbent upon us, you and me, one finger back and no, this way, yeah. It's, I got, how, how do they do that? Me. Yeah, yeah. I got to release something. Let go of some stuff so that God's work can be truly done in my life. And for the next 30 days, I pray that we all figure out what we have to release so that God's work can be done in our lives. I'm not talking about some having some great uh, uh, faith healer come down here. I'm talking about us becoming the great faith healers. Able to heal with the power of God flowing through us. Ourselves first. And then those who are around us. Thank you, brother. Getting a little concerned there that I might not have been saying anything. <laughs> Then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way. And as you have believed, so let it be done to you. And his servant was healed in that same hour. In verse 9, the centurion's own words teach us how to approach Jesus. Especially from the point of our lives. He says, I am a man under authority. Not that I am a man that has authority or I am a man of authority. I am a man under authority. You don't approach God, let alone Jesus, on your own power and authority. Why? Because you don't have any. And when you begin to understand your own power and the authority in God's word, then you have a better idea how to exercise faith. In verse 10, Jesus publicly proclaims that the type of faith that is being exhibited when you are seeking a miracle from God is to be great. How many of us would ask somebody to cook for us by saying, Brother Will, I've heard that you're a mediocre cook. And would you just barely slop something together and throw it on the plate because I'm hungry? <laughs> but I wouldn't ask it that way and nobody else would. <laughs> All right. I don't like spam. <laughs> I want some deviled eggs. <laughs> that was a Monty Python reference. Went all the oil over all you guys' head. <laughs> It's a delicacy if you know how to cook it right. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tune in next Sunday for How to Cook Spam, <laughs> as taught by Brother Will. In the meantime, we'll get back to faith <laughs> by Pastor Dan. <laughs> If you're asking for a miracle from God, you've got to 
understand that you have to understand that your faith has to be great. The whole point of this is don't come to God half-stepping. Step to him like you understand who he is. When the centurion comes to Jesus, he proclaims, I'm a man under authority. Like game, as they say, game recognizes game. So I know who you are. Why? I know who I am. If I don't know who I am, how could I possibly understand who you are? He continues in verse 11 and 12 explaining that a lot of people say they want God's blessing, but they don't have or do what it takes to get what they say they want. Even though New Bethel is a deliverance ministry, our successes and our fa or our failures are in God's hands. I know, because I listen to some of y'all talk when you don't think I can hear you. We have had a few failures <laughs> come through New Bethel, claiming to be somebody or to be something or to want something or this, that, and the other. And New Bethel throws their doors wide open and says, it's all here for you. Come on in and get it. And they, through their own weaknesses or their own issues, are not able to partake of the food that is offered. We have learned that you can't push a rope. And you can lead a child to dinner, but you can't make them eat. <laughs> the person or somebody must have a drive or willingness to receive a blessing or healing from God. And finally, in verse 12, the blessing and healing is given. And in this case, and I dare to say, in every case, in direct proportion to the faith displayed. In other words, if you're offered a gigantic blessing, it must mean that you have shown a gigantic faith. And there are people who come to Jesus seeking blessings, but they did not have or display the faith required to get those blessings. And the Bible reports that one of them went away sorrowful, for he was a man of great possession. Please think about this as we embark on, the, on this month-long faith walk. Here are some of the principles. Let's start with an affirmation of faith. Now, I would love you to memorize it, to meditate on it, to pray on it, think it, believe it, speak it, receive it, accept it, claim it, act on it, and live it. That seems to be a lot, but I'm telling you, it's no more than you do on a daily basis. Every one of us has memorized our, our key code for the bank. Every one of us thinks about something we want to be doing. Every one of us should be praying on that which we're thinking about. If you are about to jump the broom, you should be thinking and praying and meditating on that. If you are doing your job to the glory and honor of God, you think about it and you meditate on it and you pray and you ask that your steps be ordered and your path be blessed. And those that you come across, even if you're just walking, are, we need to be saying, Lord, put the next person in my life that you want to bless and allow me to be that blessing. We need to think it. Don't just throw something together. If you're cooking for me, don't just throw stuff on a plate. Figure out, find out at least what it is I like to eat. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> 
No doggone good and well, I'm not a chicken person. That's why she said it. <laughs> I do like my ginger ale. Amen. Believe it. Believe it. We serve a God that's able to do great and abundant things more than we could ever fast, th think or ask, but we have to believe it. Don't keep it to yourself. Speak it. See, some of us don't want to proclaim our faith because when we get caught short not using it, somebody will be pointing a finger on at us going, Aren't you? Didn't you tell me you was a Christian? And here you are crying and whining about what you ain't got. Where's your God now? And you brought that all on yourself. You brought that all on yourself. Don't just talk about it. Receive it. If right today I was handing out $100 bills and I said form a line right there to get your $100 bill, every one of us would be in that line, including me. <laughs> and what am I going to do? I'm going to receive that $100 bill. And once I receive it, I'm going to accept it as long as it's real. And then if you ask me whose $100 bill, I'm going to say it's mine. You got to claim your faith. It's my faith. And then I get to act on it. I take that $100 bill and take my truck up to the gas station and fill it about halfway up, <laughs> unfortunately. I live like a person with a $100 bill. That's important. Some of us are not living like the faith that we have. It doesn't mean that I expect you to be strutting up and down the street blowing your big horn, but could you at least not shuffle when you walk? Could you pick your feet up and square your arms back? Hold your head high and act like you know? You want to know who gets mugged on the street? The one who doesn't look like he knows what he's doing. I've seen women walk through dangerous neighborhoods of no issue whatsoever because they walk with a purpose. They command their steps. They act like they got the angels around them. You go through a step, do ducking and like that, you about to get jumped. I'm just saying, we got to act like we know. We got to live it. This can't be, you take a breath, every however many seconds. Our faith needs to be a breath that we take every few seconds. Always proclaiming that we know that we know faith. Strong trust in something, an allegiance, assurance, freedom from doubt. You cannot have, you say, what do they say? If you worry, don't pray. But if you pray, don't worry. The two cannot exist in the same plane. Light cannot exist with darkness. We have a freedom from doubt when we have faith. Belief, something regarded as true, trustworthy, acceptable expectation to place our confidence in. Okay, we're going to fix this. There you go. In the handout that I've given you, you'll see all of this. I invite you, I ask you, I implore you to read this on a daily basis and to speak it out loud. Those of you who are on a faith walk with somebody, you should... Y'all should do it together every day. Call each other and say, I just called to go through my affirmation of face with you.
I believe. I receive. I believe that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I know y'all have been sitting, and I'm not usually one of these turn to your neighbor preachers, but today I am. So I'm going to ask you to stand up, please, if you can stand. Turn to your neighbor. If you ain't got a neighbor, find one. Put your books down. Hold somebody's hand. Look deeply in their eyes. Now would be a good time to hope that you've used your mouthwash. And say, I believe that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Say it loud. I accept that every tongue that rises against me in judgment, I condemn. I believe that in the name of Jesus, I can cast out devils. Get a little quiet now. I believe in the name of Jesus, I can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I believe I can take the shield of faith and quench every fiery dart of the enemy. And last but not least, I believe that I stand in that evil day having my loins girded with, about with truth. What he said, amen. I and I believe I have the breastplate of righteousness. I believe my feet are shod with the gospel of peace. I believe I will take the shield of faith. Oh, come on, starting to get a little weak now. Amen. I believe I'm covered with the helmet of salvation. I believe I will use the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> amen. If this was a good down home Baptist church, we'd have we'd sing glory, glory, hallelujah. And notice the second verse is the teacher hit me with a ruler. That's not the second verse. <laughs> Just letting you know that's not the second. We have the keys, people. There was a game show that if you won the game show, they'd give you a key. You take the key over to the car. If the key, they line up four or five people, and each person had a key, and they would say, okay, on the count of three, turn the key. And the car that started was the car that you got, the one got to keep the car. We all got the keys. We turned the keys. Every one of our cars going to start. That's the kind of faith that over the next 30 days we are going to be exhibiting. And I promise you, I guarantee you, I believe the God that I serve that says, if we do this, 30 days from now, there'll be some miracles. Thank you. That's what I'm looking for. Little affirmation. If we do this in the next 30 days, there's going to be some victories won. If we do this over the next 30 days, we're not going to have the same problem. We'll have different ones. Amen. And we'll deal with them like we dealt with the ones we had. Some of us have been had the same problem for way too long, people. I'm serious. Just want you to understand that I'm proclaiming and I'm trusting. I won't have this in 30 days. I won't need it. It's been a blessing. It has been necessary. And sometimes you see me hobbling around without it. But I believe that 
in faith in Jesus Christ that I will one day be able to let this thing go, put it down and just walk like I got a, a purpose. And every one of us is carrying one of these, whether we know it or not. Every one of us is leaning on something that we should not be leaning on. And for the next 30 days, you need to identify what your cane you are carrying. And please, people, let's put those canes down. It's no more than my God can do. It's no more than he's capable of. It isn't even any more than he's promised to do. But we have got to start acting like it. We have got to start believing and trusting on it. Amen. Amen. A lot of people have to be prayed for. Is that a list? It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my mother, not my brother, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my sister, not my brother, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Just go ahead and grab it and bring it over here. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Amen. Amen. And now is the time that I just, we just need to. If you have a particular prayer request and you didn't let make our, our gatekeeper know about it, make him known about it now. Prayer is very important. We have to talk to God, but more importantly, we need to listen to God and hear what's being said. As Brother, I was looking around, I, uh, I have a prayer, but I want everyone to be in on this prayer. Everyone be praying because they saw his list there. I'm praying that we're going to run out of empty chairs. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I want everyone. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> we're going to run out of empty chairs. If you feel like you want to, you let, lay hands on a chair and pray someone in an empty chair. Amen. <laughs> Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Not enough room in the parking lot. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. So, uh, Able to pay pastor's salary. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Glory. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> prayer request from Will. We want us to pray for his father who's going to have a heart surgery. All right. And, he, and his sister uh, having a baby soon. Pray for her, Anita. And uh, Reverend Ernest, you want to pray for him? Yes, yes. And, uh, we uh, have a list at the back of our things to pray for. We, I already prayed again for Daniel Walker's leg. He's going to be totally healed in the next month. Amen. And uh, Chris Cole. Pat, Reverend Percy Garrett, Brother Chris Horn, or anyone you know that's in a hospital, and the drug addicts, you know, the fentanyl is a big problem. There's thousands and thousands of people are dying from fentanyl overdoses that are being brought into this country. So I, I just come against uh, the drug addiction, the deaths from drug addiction. People be set free in Jesus' name. Bring in homeless people. Amen. Let them come here. Get saved. Go to the Holy Ghost. And be successful. Amen. 
Amen. Okay. And her name is uh, Linda. 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 Okay. Let's go. Healing and blessing of Linda right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. The 12 step program. Yes. Amen. Uh, it is a Christian. Right, I agree. I agree. <laughs> Amen. So we just speak blessing and healing on her and deliverance. Amen. In Jesus' name. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. I just speak that over it. You can be free indeed. Amen. And, and this lady over here. Uh, bless her. No, no, yeah. Blessings on her. Open ears. You. Open. Healing. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless. Yes. 